Hello my quilting friends, Leah Day here with a new Quilty Box video. I just received my special box of fun gear and I can't wait to come up with something new to make this month. So let's get started. So here's this month's Quilty Box. Just in case you've never heard of this, basically it's a subscription service where you get a box of fun gear kind of in the middle of every month. And each box is curated by a different designer. So this box is put together by Vanessa Wilson, the crafty Gemini. And so she picked all of the supplies that go in this box. And I should also add, she has put together some cool video tutorials on what she wanted you to do with all of these supplies. So definitely check that out at craftygemini.com slash quilty box. So I'm unboxing it all and checking out what we've got here. We've got this cool 10 inch slicer. Um, it's basically a template that will cut a 10 inch, like this part of it is 10 inches, but then it's a diagonal line and it's kind of cool. It runs from two and a half inches to six and a quarter down here. I think there's a lot of cool things that we can do with this. It's going to cut a very asymmetrical shape out of our 10 inch pre-cuts. So I think there's a lot of cool things we can do with this. We have some thread. This is Cotton Petites. And I believe Crafty Gemini used this for hand quilting. So it's definitely making me intrigued. Maybe try some hand quilting this month. Our fabric is 10 inch pre-cuts of Birds and the Beads. And it's really, really bright, beautiful printed fabric. This is gonna be a lot of fun to play with. And we have some paper salty. This is water soluble stabilizer. This is great for foundation piecing uh, because it forms a foundation. You don't have to tear it away or pick things out. You can leave it behind the quilt and it makes it really easy to paper piece and get a really exact shape in your piecing. So now that I have all this gear, let me take a minute to figure out what I'm gonna do with it and I'll meet you back here when I've got a plan. So the first thing I've done is pulled out all the fabrics in the pre-cut pack and arranged them according to color. So here I've got some bright pinks, some lime greens, and I have, looks like two to three cuts of each color. Like the, this is one of my favorite colors in the pack, this teal, and I've got three cuts of it. And this purple looks like I have four pieces in that colorway, only two pieces of the orange. And I've got quite a lot of this white and gray. And while I like it, I don't really like the look of these two colors with all the rest of them. So I think I'm gonna save these for the backing of this quilt. I think I'm gonna make just a little baby quilt, really bright and cheerful. So the next step is to prep your fabric. And the really, really important thing with pre-cuts is always to starch and press. So I've already done that with these. I'm gonna set these aside. I'm definitely going to be using them. I think I wanna take these guys and mix them with some white fabric. Just cut out the square starch it, and I want to use this special 10 inch slicer and maybe slice both the pre-cut square and this white square and cut them right across and then put them together again and just see what that looks like and go from there. So that's what I'm going to start with. So I'm gonna get started just lining up the two fabrics together, a white square on top of one of my pre-cut squares. And I'm just lining up the 10 inch slicer from the quilty box with the edges of the pre-cut. You can see my white square is just a little smaller. That's okay, everything's gonna get trimmed up in the end so it's no big deal. And I clearly need a new rotary cutting blade. I always push my blades to like the absolute limit. <laughs> I really need to change that. All right, so now that I sliced them in half, I think I'm going to take this piece and this piece and put them together. And then I'll take this piece and this piece and put them together and let's see what we get. To start piecing, I always sew through a little scrap. It's like a two inch square folded in half. And what that does is it catches both thread tails, pulls them together, ensures that I you know, and the threads are not gonna get sucked down into the bottom of the machine. It also gets my foot up to the exact right height that I need for piecing so that I can just slip the two pieces. I'm gonna lift the foot ever so slightly with my knee lifter and slip the two pieces underneath. And with piecing, you wanna make sure using a quarter inch patchwork foot 
No, none of that fabric is coming off of the edge, that right edge. You wanna make sure it stays really nicely aligned. You also wanna make sure that the two pieces stay on, right on top of one another with their edges aligned as well. Now this is not necessarily a bias seam, but it's definitely at an angle. So take your time and take it slow. You start pulling and tugging on this thing, it's really gonna stretch out of shape and distort. So with my pieces pieced together nicely, I'm going to finger press the seams open and I wanna do this really gently. Again, this is a seam that was stitched, not necessarily on the bias, but just on the diagonal. So we have a lot more stretch going this way than we usually do when putting pieces together. So I wanna finger that, press that open and then just take my iron and press and press again. And if you're curious, um, a lot of people are like, oh, why do you have to do that? Or, you know, why don't you press your seams to one side instead? Isn't that unsafe? Isn't the batting gonna come out through the quilt? Um, no, it's not because I stitch with a very narrow stitch length. I lower my stitch length to 1.5 millimeters and that stitches everything very nicely and securely together so that I can press my seam allowances open and have a much easier job quilting over that. Otherwise it just gets really, really bulky. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Okay, so now that my pieces are put together, I think that now's the time to just kind of play around with them and see what we can do. We can do a lot of different things, you know, just staggering these shapes across a quilt, you know, leaving that nice negative space, kind of building out that negative space. That would be kind of cool. Could flip it and do this angle. And I think that if we stacked another one, it would have almost a chevron effect. And I think that would be really cool. I do think that it would look better though, not the same fabric. I mean, this is nearly lining up with the print. And I think that's really unusual. I think what I'm gonna do instead is prep all the blocks and then lay them out so then I have two of the same color family. So like this green next to this green, but not the exact same print next to one another. So I'm gonna play around with this, make some more blocks, uh, play with my layout, and I'll meet you back here when I've got my quilt put together. So here is our finished quilt. I made this modern chevron quilt using 18 fabrics from the layer cake uh, and 18 squares of white fabric as well. Uh, piece them together and then cut all the blocks down to nine inches square and then put it all together. It ended up making 36 blocks so I could make a really cute six by six throw size quilt. So this was a lot of fun and I can't wait to play with some cool machine quilting designs. In these negative spaces, the white areas where something can really stand out and show off, they quilt something much more simply in these areas. The fabric is really the focal point in these areas. Maybe just some straight lines, something really simple that I don't really have to worry about even being able to see where I'm going because it's gonna be kind of a challenge in areas like this. I really enjoyed playing with the materials in this month's Quilty Box and I've got some exciting news. Next month, December 2015, I'm putting the, together all the materials in the box. So definitely sign up for Quilty Box so you don't miss out on the special box I'm putting together for you. Check it all out at quiltybox.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.